In this video, we'll learn to animate our player's idle, walking, and jumping animations, going from individual sprites to in-game movement. I'm going to be starting out with a scene we created in a previous video, where we made a simple 2D platformer with player movement. I'll link the video. Now we'll get our sprites ready. For this tutorial, I use this really cool asset by Zeggy Games. Uh, it's free to download, and version 1 has everything we need, and I'll also link that below. After downloading, unzipping, and opening the sprites into a sprite, I painted over each frame template to make us a cat character, just for fun. I then saved my animations as PNGs so that each frame would save into individual files. You can see we have 10 individual idle sprites now, uh, and I did the same for the walking animation, which had 8 frames, so we have 8 sprites. You can use any images you like, I just wanted to show you how I did mine. Now in Unity, we'll create a new folder in assets called sprites. And uh, we'll open up our file explorer and get those saved sprites and drag them into our new sprites folder. When sprites are imported into Unity, they're given some default settings that probably won't match our sprite. So if I drag in our first sprite into our player, we'll see that in the scene it's really small. So what we need to do is select all our sprites and in the inspector we'll change the pixel per unit to be 48, which is the size of our sprite, and the filter mode to be point to no filter, and the compression to be none. And then also going to our player's transform and just upping the scale a bit. While we're at it, I'm going to click on our main camera object and click on the background and set it to a lighter color, just for more cal clar per per clarity. <laughs> Final tidy up, since the sprite has empty space around it, I'm just going to make sure our box collider ends at our player's feet, otherwise it'll float. Now we need to bring in our animation window, so click Window, Animation, Animation, and I'll just drag this down the bottom, and then Window, Animation, Animator, which will then automatically open in a new tab. Just going to up his scale a bit more. Okay, so when we click on our player, you can see at the bottom, uh, there'll be a Create button in the Animation window. If we click on this and navigate to our Assets folder, we'll create a new folder called Animations. Um, if we go inside this folder and name our bottom thing idle and then click save we'll see this is automatically added an animator to our player object named player and created a new animation called idle in our new folder um, and attach this to our animator in our sprites folder select all our idle sprites and drag them into the animation window making sure idle is selected from that little drop down if you click on our player we can press play and watch our new animation run and he's going a little bit too fast so we can stretch our frames out uh, and make this run a little slower i'm just going to move it down to 0.4 and when we check again much better click the drop down now and select new animation name it walk and click save now selecting our walking sprites and drag them into our animation window we know it's fast but it's fun to see him skedaddle um so <laughs> we'll drag the frames out uh, I went to about 0.55, um, so we can see he's running at a better speed, but if you can see the final frame skips to the first one really fast and it looks a little jittery, to fix this, if we grab the first frame and put it at the end, spaced out uh, the same amount, he runs much smoother. He's running a bit slow though, so I'm going to speed him up by shortening the frames again down to 0.45. There we go. In our old scene, our sprite was facing left, so I'm just going to flip our cat to make our code work. Now we can make an animation for jump and for fall. Um, our jump and fall frames, frames animations will be just one frame, uh, so we'll just drag in one sprite there, and it'll look good. <laughs> There's our jump, and we're going to do our fall now, so just drag it in one image, and we're all good. Cool, now we're going to set everything up in our animator to get us animated. So if you right click on our animator, go create state and then from new blend tree, um, click on this new module and name it movement. Double click to go inside our new movement module. And on the right hand side under motions, click the plus symbol and add motion field. Add to, then we'll go to our animations folder and drag in the idle into the top spot and our warp animation into the bottom spot. What our blend tree does is switch between these two states for us when the given parameter changes from 0 to 1. So let's set up the parameters to pass in. Uh, on the left hand side under parameters tab, select the plus and add a fr float parameter, uh, name it x velocity. And then back on the right hand side, uh, we'll set the parameter from blend to x velocity. 
Now we can click on base layer to go back to the main bit of our animator um, and we can remove the idle and walk animation since they are held in our movement blend tree now. We we'll also want to right click movement and select set as default state. Nope, set as layer default state. Next we'll add our jumping blend tree. Right click in our animator, go create state and from new blend tree and name it jumping. Uh, and then we'll double click and go inside. We'll add two new motions, top one for fall and the bottom one will be for jump. Um, and we'll want to untick the automate thresholds. Since we want our falling to be uh, minus one to one and we want our jump to be zero to one because when falling down our Y velocity will go into the negatives. Now we'll add our float parameter for jumping um, and name it Y velocity. We can delete this default blend float, set our blend tree's parameter to be Y velocity. And we'll add a new parameter, this time of type ball and name it is jumping. And that's all our animator modules. Um, we'll be using this any state entrance point, so I'll move that down and we can delete these two since they're in our blend tree. So from our any state, we want to be able to jump. Uh, so right click on any state and add a transition and click on jumping to link them up. Click on the transition arrow and scroll to conditions, add a new condition and set this to be is jumping is true. Then add another transition, this time from jumping back to our default movement module. Uh, select this transition and add a condition, this time it will be is jumping is false. So when we're done jumping, we'll go back to either idling or walking. So that our jumping animation can transition better into standing, we're going to add another collider to our player. Select our player and add a new component, a capsule collider, uh, 2D, and set its direction to be horizontal. And edit its area to cover just on and below its feet so that we can detect the ground sooner. We'll also need to make sure we set this capsule collider to be is trigger so that our character doesn't float, uh, since is trigger makes the collider be able to pass through other colliders. It won't hit our ground and yeah, we won't stand on it. Now we're going to open up our movement script and add in the code to get our animations running. First, we're going to go through and make some changes to our original script. So we had is jumping before. We're going to change this to be is grounded um, just because it makes a little more sense logically. Uh, so everywhere we have is jumping, I'm going to replace that with is grounded and make it the opposite. So not is grounded and is grounded equals false. And now is grounded equals true. So when we hit our collider, it'll be true. But instead of using this on collision enter 2D, we're going to be using on trigger enter 2D uh, since we want to use that capsule collider we added instead of our box collider. Um, so if we just add this in and replace it. Cool. So next we're going to add in our variable to call our animator. Um, so we're just going to type animator and call it animator. And then down in the start function, we'll initialize this animator. So we'll do animator equals get component animator. Now in our update function, we'll call our animators set ball function to set our is jumping parameter to be not is grounded. So is grounded with an explanation mark in front. Um, and in this case, it'll be true and make our player jump. Now in our fixed update, we'll set our x velocity parameter um, to be the same as our rigid body's x velocity. So animator.setfloat x velocity and then we'll pass in rb.velocity.x. Since this value makes our blend tree walk while positive and idle while zero, but our x velocity goes negative while walking left, we'll need to wrap our rigid body's x velocity in a math abs function. Uh, what this does will make our value flip to positive no matter what we pass in. We'll again call our animators set float and pass in our y velocity this time. Uh, we won't need the maths ab though since when we fall it goes to negative and this is what we want to check on in our blend tree. And finally we'll add the same set ball for is jumping as above so we can just copy and paste this down into our on trigger enter 2d. Now when we press play, we can see our default movement module is being triggered and if we look inside, we can see it switching between walking and idling. If we go back and jump, we can see we're jumping and we're switching between falling and jumping inside that blend tree. And that's it.
I'll link the previous video down below as well so you can move your character in case you haven't done that and my Patreon where you can get all the source code for this and all previous and future projects. Wow! Cat's gonna go take a look now too.